every day guys, I get a lot, a lot of questions. As far as making money in real estate in general, this this falls to all types of strategies in real estate. This is my secret of how I make a fortune in real estate. Free content that I give out guys. I'm very passionate what I do about teaching. Now that you dial 500 deal that's a four bedroom, two bathroom area. Hey, what's going on guys and guys? Antonio Edwards here. Um, top rated podcast on iTunes. It's called The Real Estate Rich and Famous. Go ahead and subscribe to that podcast if you haven't already subscribed to that. It has some phenomenal content, um, free content. I appreciate everybody that has already subscribed and, and leaving feedback and reviews and letting me know what you think about those podcast episodes. It really means a lot to me. So if you haven't subscribed to that podcast, go ahead and subscribe after this video um, it's called the real estate rich and famous um, also um, if you haven't um, gotten my book on Amazon it's called the life of real estate investing all right go ahead and get that is um, the uh, top rated selling real estate book on Amazon guys the life of real estate investing go ahead and grab that guys but here in today's video guys the topic I'm going to talk to you about we're going to take a sip of wine real quick because my mouth getting dry already uh, topic we're going to talk about is um, um, picking up a check at closing. All right, we're going to talk about the title process, which is very, very important. If you don't know about the title process and how that works, and, you know, then you're going to probably be SOL as far as making money in real estate in general. This this falls to all types of strategies in real estate, knowing the title process. All right, so picking up a check. All right, so. This is actually a check that I was dropping off at the title company. If you want to take a look at this here, uh, where I'm just buying a house, okay? So I, I had to drop off this cashier's check to the title company for, for me to even purchase the property. For, 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 before I can take title, I have to drop off the check. All right, so let's talk about the um, a title company process and how to pick up a check. All right, so uh, this is an important note. You would not get your check without first going through a title company. We just spoke, with that, we spoke about that briefly. You would not get your check without first going through the title company. All right, so this is very important. Stop all what you're doing. You know, uh, if you're just on your phone playing while, you, while this video is playing, or if you're just getting sidetracked while this video is playing, just stop and just take all focus. All right, so the title company, it's a firm that verifies ownership of real property often done in connection with conveyance of real property from seller to buyer, all right? Now, the valid owner or the seller is determined through a thorough examination of property records and through a title search, all right? So, the title company uh, does a title search uh, before you even take title to the property, or even if you're wholesaling, for, even if you're wholesaling the property, before your end buyer buys the property, you need to get a title search done. Make sure there's no liens, no judgments, no purposes, nothing on that type of pro that piece of property before the deed get transferred to a new party. All right. So all the following must be sent to a title company via email, fax, mail, or drop off. All right. Now this is you know specifically for if you're wholesaling properties. Uh, you know you need to have this as soon as you get the, the paperwork signed. Just say your purchase and sale agreement signed between you and the seller. That needs to go to the title company. Your, your signed agreement to purchase real estate contract needs to go to the title company, which you're also called your purchase and sale agreement, or some people call it your PS agreement. Alright? Your signed assignment of contract needs to go to the title company. Every piece of paperwork needs to go to the title, to the title company that's involved with that property. Alright? And if you have this, your signed memorandum of contract, and I do recommend that you uh, do a memorandum, a memorandum of contract if you're dealing with a seller, especially if they're local in your market and that they're close to that property you get on the contract. All right, memorandum of contract. If you don't know what a memorandum of contract is, it's a legal sized document that you get notarized from a notary that you and the seller are entering into a valid contract and they cannot sell to somebody else um, while they have a valid contract with you. If so, you can put a lien on their property and they will have to go through you first 
before they they would they will be able to sell to that next part, which is, is, a, is a nice way to um, to to lock in a profit. Okay. So all right, so your your, your purchase sale agreement, your signing of contract, and your memorandum of contract. You know, typically when you're wholesaling a property, these are the only three main documents you need. But anyway, those prop those I'm sorry those documents will go to the title company to start the process. Okay. And you let them, the title company know via email or phone to, to go ahead and order the title search. Or if you don't have an end buyer and you're looking for an end buyer and you already have your purchase sale agreement signed and you send that to the title company, maybe you'll hold off on the title search until you find the end buyer first. You know, that's a very good tip there, okay? Alright, so uh, all right, any documentation regarding the property you are involved with in regards to a real estate transaction must go to the title company so they can handle all the dirty work. All right, we already spoke about that. All the documents go to the title company first. All right, here are the reasons for a title company, okay? The title company does all the dirty work, all right? They run a detailed title search before your end buyer takes title. Make sure there are no liens, judgments, or encumbrances against the property, as I spoke earlier about that, all right? Um, if any liens, judgments, or encumbrances, the title company cleans up all the bad spills before any closing happens. So if there's a judgment that comes up, you want to make sure, or liens or anything, you want to make sure all that stuff is cleaned up on the property before somebody else takes title. You don't you don't want to take title on a property that has or a ten or twenty thousand dollar lien or judgment on that property, or you don't want your end buyer to, to take title like that. So if anybody out here um, just trying to quick claim deed your property without going through the title company, run, okay? I have buyers, you know, I, I, they're like real slick buyers, you know, people I don't even know like that. They have this property sounds very intriguing, very promising, but they want to quick claim deed me that property. No, I want to take this to the title company. I want to get a title search. I want to make sure there's no liens, judgments, anything that's cleaned up before I take title or before my end buyer takes title, either or. I don't, I don't want to give my end buyer bad business because I want to keep doing business with this person. Or even if I'm taking title of properties, I want to make sure something's clean, all right? All right, so uh, they hold all monies in escrow until closing. You know, this is the title company's bank account. You know, when you hear, hear escrow, it's nothing but a bank account from a, uh, um, that, that the title company has. It could be still SunTrust, it could be Bank of America, or Fargo, or whatever. This escrow is just a bank account, okay, that, that the title company has, all right? So they hold all monies in escrow. So maybe you're, you're just say, if you get a non-refundable non deposit from your end buyer, you might want to hold it in escrow with the title company. That's cool with me. That, that's, that just, just, that's fair, okay? Because they might not want to give it to you because you might run with a $1,000 or maybe not. But, you know, if a buyer wants to hold the money in escrow with the title company, that's fine. Okay, I just know as long as, long as that, that deposit is in escrow, I want to verify to the, with the title company that his or her money is in escrow. Um, and, you know, whether, whether it's a $500 or a $1,000 deposit. All right. And also, when you get a um, property on the contract with the seller, the purchase sale agreement, I'm assuming you have a, at least $1 deposit, you know, on your contract. So if it's a dollar deposit, ten dollars, hundred dollars, whatever, uh, make sure you put that money in escrow as well, okay, to have a valid contract. Some title companies might let you slide if that's like your 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 bread and butter title company you use all the time. But by law you still if it, if it has a dollar on the contract or you know fifty cents or whatever, whatever type of money you have on the contract as far as, as far as your deposit, it has to be somewhere if you gave it to the seller or you put it in, in escrow which i definitely recommend putting in escrow the title company all also prepares the hud one statement okay this is a document which discloses all expenses involved with that particular real estate transaction details on property your contract price your assignment fee your end buyers amount to bring to closing your net to the seller and also has the title company fees. Everything that's involved in number-wise is on the HUD statement. You can't leave anything off the HUD by law if you're doing anything money-wise with that property. So just say if somebody wants to, uh, just say if you're flipping a property for, you got a property contract for fifty thousand dollars, and you're trying to sell it to an end buyer for sixty, that means you're gonna make ten grand real quick consignment fee. 
that 10 grand has to be on the HUD state, okay? I hear buyers sometimes, you know, not all the time, but like here and there, a buyer might be like, hey, I'll give you 10 grand out of my pocket if you let me step into your shoes of that $50,000 contract. No, I just want to sign it to you for the $60,000. It's all the same. You're still in it for 60. You know, I, I have to be disclosed on that HUD, okay, that I'm making 10 grand. All right, so uh, also they offer title insurance. When your end buyer takes title to property and the title issue comes up from previous seller, from the previous seller, title insurance will handle the issue and it's the title company's fault for missing the title issue before a title change, all right? Uh, so make sure you get title insurance or if you're not, you know, if you're just assigned the property, make sure, uh, just recommend to your end buyer to get title insurance. I mean, if they're a savvy investor, they're buying properties, they're gonna get title insurance, all right? But, for your purposes, if you're buying properties, make sure you get title insurance when you take title. Because it still could be a hiccup that the title company missed when you bought that property. Maybe from adjustment or a lien that might pop up, which, which I had in the past happen. All right? So that title insurance will take care of that issue just in case the title company missed a, a lien or adjustment. All right? It, it'll take care of that issue for you. Just like car insurance, you know, somebody it hits you or if you hit somebody your car insurance will take care of that that um that accident for you all right all right so once title is all cleaned up and all lien judgments on promises what's next all right what's next so all the liens and judgments and promises title is completely cleaned up what's next the HUD one statement is prepared. Once the HUD one is prepared, guys, I start getting excited because I'm about to get some money or I'm about to drop off some money to take to buy a property. Okay, so uh, either way, it's fine with me. All right, so once the title is all clean from all the adjustments and the promises, what's next, guys? What's next? All right, so this is what's next. The HUD one statement is prepared. Alright, I like when the HUD was prepared because well, when I'm getting a preliminary HUD in my email or our email, my sister's email, whatever it goes to, that means that we're getting like to the nitty gritty of closing. Alright guys, so um, alright, so right, right now is the HUD one statement I want you guys to look at, see what the HUD one statement. We can just take a look at the HUD one statement. As you can see, uh, this is page one of the HUD one statement. Um, yeah, on, the, on page one, it, it gives a summary of how much the end buyer is going to, or you, if you're purchasing the property, how much cash do they need to bring to the title company, and how much cash that your seller is going to connect. So on the left side is your buyer, or you, if you're the buyer, it's, it's, that's the expense for you or your end buyer. To the right is the expenses for your seller. That's always the case, okay? All right, guys, so page two, um, page, page two just gives you a breakdown of page one summary for all the expenses. Uh, your assignment fee is going to be up there if you're flipping or wholesaling property or if you're buying the property, it's going to give you all your breakdown expenses. So all your end buyer's expenses, if you're wholesaling the property, is going to be on page two on the left side. On the right side, it's going to have your seller's expenses for their closing costs or if they're not paying the closing costs it's going to be moved over to the left side to your side where if you're buying the property or, or your end buyer's um, side if you're flipping the property to him his expenses will be on that side alright so um, we go to page three page three guys is just going to um, be an extra page where your seller is going to sign and is going to have a, another breakdown of all the expenses uh, of the property. Now all the following needs to be sent to a title company via email, fax, mail, or drop off. Your purchase and sale agreement or your agreement to purchase real estate or your PNS agreement. People call it different things but it's all the same thing. Your assignment agreement, alright, um, and also if you haven't if you're not using that memorandum contract, guys, shame on you. That memorandum contract, that memorandum contract, again, just to recap you, it, it allows you to cloud the title and put a lien on the property if 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 your if your seller sells the property behind your back while you guys have a valid contract. The the the, the, um, the memorandum contract is a legal sized document which the notary 
um, notarizes that document saying that you guys have entered a a valid contract between each other all right and then you can use that con that memorandum contract to cloud the title all right so that that seller will never be allowed to sell that property behind your back so you have your purchase sale agreement your assignment of contract and your memorandum contract all needs to go to the title company anything as far as documentation wise that's involving the property that you're dealing with needs to go to the title company any documentation guys that's involving with that property needs to go to the title company from a loan payoff statement from you know maybe uh, the, the owner has a general power of attorney everyone reviews the HUD one statement all right from you as the wholesaler if you're wholesaling the property uh, your end buyer reviews the, um, the HUD one statement and also your seller if you're actual if you're buying the property of course which um, you know I do recommend you know if you're not buying properties to eventually buy properties and hold these properties uh, but everyone who reviews the whole HUD statement you as the wholesaler or if you're buying the property and your end buyer if there's end buyer involved he reviews the pro um, sorry the product property but the HUD one statement and your seller reviews the HUD one statement okay so everybody reviews the HUD-1 statement. Usually, for the title companies I work with, the seller reviews the HUD-1 last because you may have a shortage of an assignment fee on the HUD-1 statement. You want to make sure that's cleaned up and your end buyer's closing costs uh, may have a shortage or maybe has too much closing costs and they may need to do some editing to the numbers before it goes to the seller before they review the HUD-1, all right? Um, but here's a note, okay? If your assignment fee is not on the HUD, guys, make sure it's on the HUD. That's the purpose of revealing these HUD statements because, just saying an example again, if your assignment fee is not on the HUD, make sure it is because if it's not, you're not going to get paid, all right? Uh, you're not going to get paid. I had a, a, um, an incident recently with a, a wholesaler that, that sold me a property, right, which I bought from him. He was short a hundred bucks, not a lot, but he was short a hundred dollars on the on the um, hush statement, which he shouldn't have been short on the assignment fee. On I'm sorry, on the assignment agreement, which we he signed when he he signed sent to me, it had everything right as far as the numbers. So when it went to the title company, they should have had that right. He shouldn't have been short a hundred bucks. All right. So once HUD-1 is approved by all parties, your end buyer brings all funds to closing. So just to give an example, your contract amount price, all right, is just saying example, $50,000. Your added assignment fee is $10,000. All closing costs, title company fees, mis and miscellaneous expenses, etc., is $1,500. So let's say that's $61,500. Your end buyer will bring to close the title company or the closing table either by cashier's check or a bank wire. $61,500. Title company disperses funds from their escrow to all parties who get paid according to the HUD one. Previous example, as we talked about just, just a few minutes ago. Out of that $61,500, $1,500 goes to the title company as expenses and miscellaneous. The $50,000 goes to goes net to your seller and the $10,000 goes net to you. That's your assignment fee. You get $10,000 paid without owning the property, without coming any money down out of your pocket and without ownership of the property without using any of your credit, of course. All right, so I, I, I appreciate you watching this video. Um, I hope you took note to all this stuff because the title company and knowing the title, title process is very important. I mean, a lot of people overlook that, but you have to know how the title process works. Um, go ahead and download my book right now. Go ahead, go to reirichandfamous.com. All right, that's reirichandfamous.com. Download my free book on how to flip properties and also subscribe to my podcast on iTunes. You can also check out my podcast on reirichandfamous.com too. But subscribe to the podcast, guys. This is phenomenal content. I love what I do, okay? This is a very passionate thing that I do. I love teaching. I love seeing people go from some, nothing to something. You know, started from the bottom, now we're here, okay? I love seeing that transition, that transformation to people because people go from not believing to actually believing and become confidence in themselves and, and what they do. And once you become confident in yourself, and become passionate about what you do guys the money will follow because you're helping people all right so i love you guys go to rei richandfamous.com and i'll see you in the next video